Greetings, and welcome to the Sanctum Sanctorum. I am your humble host, Pitor, otherwise known as Squiggle P. Squiggle. And I'm here, as you may have realized from the uh, title of the post, because while it's my birthday, I want to give you guys the gifts, and that is a behind-the-scenes look at Rom, the uh, action figure slash doll slash electronic toy slash hunk of plastic that hit markets in 1979. Uh, basically, when I was a kid, uh, being born in the mid to late 1960s, I was at the right age to think that Rom was pretty hip uh, reading the comic, and I thought that I wanted that, that figure pretty damn badly. And I was a bit disappointed when I didn't get one as my birthday present back then in 1980. Uh, it took many years later, but I eventually got not one, but two. And that's not from some desire to hoard them. One was as a gift from a friend of mine, and the other I had found, luckily enough, at a uh, store a few years later. But I'm going to show them to you. And um, here's the one given to me as a gift. It is loose. It comes uh, nearly complete. And this is the one that is mint in box. Ah! And uh, I will show you all that stuff now. Before I get going, I wanted to uh, quickly apologize for my appearance. Um, I got this big mop of hair going on here. I'm in between keeping it, I used to keep it cropped pretty short, uh, very Doctor Strange like. Uh, but I'm in the process of thinking of maybe growing it long again. And I apologize also for the bags into my eyes, but I work crazy hours. And, uh, which is why my blog is written after midnight in a haze of frenzy typing, and it usually is just this, this run-on of, uh, of thoughts, and there's no editing, and there's no, you know, uh, typing out a draft or anything like that. It's just what I think of is what I type, and that's kind of what you get. So I apologize for that. I wish to uh, also show you something that I thought was pretty cool. I knew that this blog post was going to be coming up soon, and so I did a little advanced... Uh, research, and I found something that I picked up, a ROM t-shirt. Ooh. It's not an official release, uh, since the rights are, you know, all over the place right now, but I think if you look online, you can find uh, one for yourselves. Okay, let's get going. ROM, 12 or 13 inch hunk plastic, is two-tone, uh, depending on oxidation. Uh, I think it's two different types of plastic. You've got the silverish gray on his headpiece and his uh, jetpack and the body turned into this, this kind of gunmetal gray. Uh, the comic itself, the first few issues, had uh, stated that he was gunmetal uh, before, I think, issue four, when all of a sudden he became silver. So when I was a kid, uh, I started reading it with issue three and hopped on and just thought it was you know, awesome. And I quickly got the first couple of issues and then just you know bought them all after that and desperately wanted a ROM figure as a kid for my birthday, but was disappointed because I didn't get one. It took years later for me to, to get these two. Um, okay, in order to operate your ROM, you need a few things. You need an alkaline 9 volt battery. It says alkaline. The instruction sheet from 1979 stipifies that you need an alkaline, so damn well make sure you got one. Because I think back in the 60s they had plutonium based uh, batteries that uh, would kill you if you put them in a toy. They just explode. But you need uh, a 9 volt battery. You also uh, will find that your ROM will come with a few different accessories. The most important of which is this. It is the transferal cable that basically gets the information from the data processor and transfers it to this uh, diode that powers his various gear. Nine out of ten ROMs that you will find on eBay or wherever are missing this. Uh, he also comes with a translator so he can grok what you're speaking for all the various uh, other alien worlds that he will visit. He comes with a uh, energy analyzer to see what you are comprised of, how, what you're made of, whether you're carbon-based, silicon-based, Rice Krispies-based, uh, Hostess fruit pie-based, uh, and then of course your, ener uh, your disruptor ray, which is your neutralizer, that basically will disrupt the energy field of anything that it is aimed at, and if you're a ray, will banish you to limbo by opening up dimensional aperture into uh, the realms between dimensions, basically sending you screaming into hell. Uh, the design of this particular item is very cool, and I wanted to show you something as a comparison. 
1979, uh, ROM neutralizer. 1990s or 2000s, uh, Dyson vacuum cleaner handle. Similar? I think so. Well, the, the, the design of this is exactly like a ray gun, so when I was picked it up, I was like, cool, I got my very own ray gun. I can hang out with ROM and blast the crap out of aliens. All right, so you got to put your uh, battery pack in here. Now, I know that a lot of people have seen ROMs, either still shots on websites, or if you've checked out uh, the video post listed above me, uh, you will have seen on the blog anyway. If you're looking at me on YouTube, you're like, what is he talking about? On my blog, above this one, is a video from the uh, 1979 Toy Fair. Parker Brothers and creator Bing McCoy put together a very cool promotional video. And you'll see him in action there. But uh, most people have never seen it behind the scenes, someone pushing the buttons and making it work. In his battery pack is where the battery is kept. And like a good TV show host, I've already installed one in there to save time. He's got three buttons in the back. Power button, on. You do that, lights come on, chest lights blink back and forth. He's ready to be programmed. You've got two buttons here, uh, depending on what you want to have happen. Now, the instructions give you all the information on how to make it work. Depending on the keystrokes that you put in back there, it will do different things. Now, since I am a 20-year-old uh, man, I need the glasses. So, okay. If you push his back once, and then activate this, his jetpacks will activate, as long as the button is depressed. So the light's flashing on his, on his backside there, that means he can fly. Uh, if you depress the button, this one twice, and then don't do anything, you hear him breathing. Sorry for the ROM crotch shot, but you want to get into the speaker. And you can stop it there. Now, depending on what you want to do, you need this. As I've mentioned, it's very crucial to have this piece of information, uh, uh, equipment hooked up. Without it, ROM is basically an impotent hunk of plastic just waving you know, toys at aliens, hoping that they will be scared away by his imposing figure. Now, the box says that the ROM is for ages 6 and up. I find that hard to believe, because uh, as an adult, I have a hard time, you know, plugging this thing in without breaking it. Which is probably another reason why this diode is broken off most of them, because you got to jam it in there and pull it back out, and that will uh, break the hell out of it. So, he's got his, his translator. You push this thing in the back one, two, three times, and this. And he's trying to figure out what you're talking about. No comprende. All right, so he's determined that you're a you know, friendly dude. Oh, how you doing? I grok. What you grok? You take that off. You pop on his energy analyzer. Give him in his hand. Hit the button one, two, three, four times. Actually, no, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five times. One, two, three, four, five times. And it will read what you might be. Hit the button in the back again a number of times. Once, twice, three times, a lady. Oh, I'm a wraith. Twice means evil. Once means you could be good. So everybody in the audience is good. I'm a bad, nasty, damn dirty wraith. Let's take that out. Pop in his neutralizer. Hit a button in the back four times, one, two, three, four. And you see that he's blasting me into the nether regions of hell. And that's pretty much all Rom did. You know, he was a one-trick pony, at least a one-toy line. Uh, he never had any other figures released in the line. He had the dire rates to be, you know, they were listed to be available, but they were never made. Parker Brothers kind of screwed him over. He had very limited uh, mobility, arms, hips knees, which, like uh, me, are the first thing to go. And that's pretty much it. You know, he didn't look anything like, like the box. The box, he was silver. He had the flat head. He didn't have the fin uh, that you'll see on this. The fin here is what connects the two pieces of plastic together. So he looks a little weird. But uh, that's pretty much wrong. I just wanted to thank you for uh, coming to the, uh, the Sanctum Sanctorum Comics blog. I appreciate you who come here every day. And even those who don't come every day, thank you so much. See you again at the Sanctum.